Don't, don't think, overthink the arbitrary point thing. We're, we're a little bit past that. That's how we came up with this idea, was the arbitrary point at each sub-interval and then taking it to infinity so we have very little width between there. That's what R is. It's the, the R is, okay, think about R as being perpendicular to the x-axis, then R is the same thing as the height of your function at any given point x, right? So that you know that your height here is just f of x. If this were some point, and I, now maybe I see what you're saying, if you pick some point x sub 1, then the height of that one point is f of x sub 1, or the same thing at the, as the radius at that point. So here's what I'm going to say. If this is a circle, then the radius of that circle has to equal f of x at any point x. Yes, no? The, is, is, the, is the radius the height of your circle at this point? The radius is the height of your circle, right? And it changes, depending on where your x is. The radius would be here, the radius would be here. That also is exactly the same thing as the function, the height of the function. So what I'm trying to get at is, you know, just, just look at the board here real quick. The height here, which is the function's height, is the same as the height here, which is the radius. Is that true? Therefore, the function equals the radius. That's another way to look at it. So radius equals the function. Well, that's kind of cool. That lets us make a substitution. If we have a sub x, which doesn't make sense right now because that's not in terms of x, is it? And we needed it in terms of x. So a of x equals pi r squared. a of x equals pi, not r, because r is not in terms of x right now. We need to make it in terms of x. What's going to go in there? And then what? Very good. How many people are able to follow that? Hey, guess what? You're done. You're done. That is the method. Because look, what we were looking for is a of x, the area in relation to some variable x. And now we have it. This is in terms of x. What it says is, in order to find the volume by slicing, you go from where the interval starts to where the interval stops of pi f of x squared dx. And it says, you know what, it's not even that hard. It says you take your function, you plug it in, you square it, and you multiply by pi. Now someone tell me something about the pi. What can you do with the pi? You can always bring it out because that's a constant and that will always be there. I show it here so you don't forget about it, but you can easily pull that out of your integral. This right here, this is called the method of disks. Why do they call it the method of disks, do you think? Yeah, which is a disk. You're basically adding up, adding up disks. Circular. You're adding up disks. That's what they call the method of disks. Now, would you like to see an example? Yes. Okay, let's do a couple of them. First one's going to be real basic, basic. And here's how some of these things are worded. Find the volume of the solid of revolution some function I'm going to give you some interval is revolved around the x-axis
So we're going to find the volume of the solid revolution. That means we're going to be revolving something. Of y equals 3 root x on the interval 1 to 4. And that's being revolved about the x-axis. So we're going to be making some circular shape. Uh, it's revolved around the x. That means it's going to have perpendicular sides. It means we can do the slicing thing. If we had this, we couldn't do the slicing thing. Because we wouldn't be able to make circles. We have to be able to make circles for this to work. You got it? That's what, where the perpendicular comes in. Now also, this could be... This could be worded a little bit differently. I need you to be prepared for that. I'm not going to write it out, but you can, you can hear the difference. This could be worded in a manner such as this. Find the volume of the solid of revolution of the area bound by y equals 3 root x, x equals 1, x equals 4, and the x-axis. Does that make sense to you? It says, take it between this function Whatever this function happens to look like, it looks like that, about. The x equals 1, x equals 4, and the x-axis. That comes up with the same exact area that you're going to be sweeping out. Do you see the point? So it can be worded differently. Don't let the wording jack you up. It's going to give you bounds. It's going to give you a function. And we're revolving that. So again, this could be written just like this, how I'm going to hopefully word it for you. Or it could be written, find the, the volume of the solid revolution that is bound between this Y, uh, x equals 1, x equals 4, those are your vertical lines, and the x-axis, that's your horizontal line. Or y equals 0 could be the x-axis as well. Feel okay with that so far? So that's the picture we're going to have. We're going to take this thing and spin it around. Now we'll go real slow and see if we can do this together. So we know that volume, the volume is some integral from a to b of pi f of x squared dx. Let's see if we can fill that out appropriately. Where is my integral going to start, do you think? Very good. Where is it going to stop? Mm -hmm. What's going to be inside of my integral, first thing? Oh yeah, you're certainly going to have a pi, for sure. That doesn't change. And then you're going to have the function f of x. Now, in our case, what is f of x? 3 root x. Very good. So we'll have 3 root x. And what do I do with that 3 root x? Do you know what now? Notice how the 3 is with that root x in this case, because that is part of your function, right? You're squaring the whole function. So we have our pi. We got our pi. We got our f of x. That's 3 root x. We got our square. Don't forget the square. Let's go forget the square. Can't forget the square. Don't forget the square. You feel okay with this so far? Notice how the integrals are going to be not so bad. Well, sometimes they are bare. I'll give you the honesty. Sometimes they're nasty. Because you're squaring functions. I mean, if I had given you like x squared minus 3x plus 4, and we had to square that, uh, that's not that fun. Uh, but this one's going to be at least a little bit nicer. You can see it, right? So don't forget to square it. What we'll get is 1 to 4 pi. Tell me about this. What happens there? Say what now? Both parts. Both parts. Not just the square root, but also the 3. So what are we going to get? That was pretty nice. See how nice of a guy I am today? I told you I was in a good mood. Yeah, we get 9x. See where the 9x is coming from. Good. Tell me something else I can do with this integral. Good, I'm going to pull out both. The 9 and the pi. From 1 to 4 of x dx. No substitution necessary. Nothing hard. Don't make these harder than they have to be. If you can do an integral without a substitution, and it's fairly easy, do it. Okay, do that. Don't trick yourself on these problems. You're going to get 9 pi times what? So we'll be evaluating from 1 to 4. You know, I'm going to show you a slightly different way you can consider this. This is another way you can do this problem. Instead of having the, the 2 here with the 4 and the 1, you know that's a constant, right? You can pull out those constants before evaluation. So here, I could write this as 9 pi 
over 2 times x squared from 1 to 4. That's also an appropriate way to write it. So you could just look at something a little bit smaller there. You just have to not forget about the 9 pi over 2. But when you do, you're going to get 4 squared minus 1 squared. That's going to be 15. Hey. Of course it works if you do it the way. It has to be the same. Yeah, it's going to work either way. Don't forget the pi, too. I don't want 135 over 2. Don't forget that pi. That changes things. What did we just find, by the way? Volume. Volume. Oh, that, that space I drew before that's being rotated around the x-axis. It would be easy to find the area, but now we can find the volume. How we're doing is we're saying, OK, all we're basically doing is this. Finding the height of the function at each point, revolving that height around, it's making a disk and adding up the surface area of the disk. That's what that's doing. How many people understand this example? Now, would you like to do something a little bit cooler? This is pretty cool already. Yeah. But what I want to do now, I want to see if we can come up with a formula for a sphere by doing some of this calculus hmm. stuff. You ever found out, you ever know, I mean, I'm sure there's many ways to come up with a formula for the volume of the sphere, but have you ever thought about actually how they did it? Hmm. I mean, how would you do it? So take, this, take this sphere and say, hmm. Well, that's got to be uh, 4 pi r cubed over 3, obviously. I mean, clearly if you have a sphere, that's going to be the volume, right? Which is the volume, of, I think it is. 4 pi r cubed over 3 should give you a volume of a sphere. So how do they find that? How would you find it? Would you actually cut up a sphere and try to organize it into rectangles and add them? Probably not. Water displacement. You could do that. You could definitely do water displacement as long as you know the exact value of pi, which no one does. But then uh, come with a rectangle that has that exact thing. It's going to be hard to do. Probably estimate it. Yeah. Okay. Probably estimate it. But to get an exact, wait, why don't we use some calculus and figure that thing out? Let's see if we can find, derive, the volume of a sphere. You ready for this? Sure. This is good stuff. To me, the first time I saw this, I was like, dang, that's, that's pretty cool. I thought that was really interesting. Now let's think about how you would get a sphere. What shape would you have to revolve around the x-axis in order to get a sphere? Half circle. Why not a full circle? Because it would be redundant. It would be redundant. It would say, well, I, I don't need that extra part. Just a half circle would do it, wouldn't it? Take a half circle, revolve it all the way around, it's going to create a sphere. So let's start with that. I tried to do it twice and look about the same. It must be the way I'm going to do it. Okay, so we don't need this bottom part. We don't 